Hello my friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA results, predicted phenotype and even GED match results of a Khvalinsk culture individual from Russia. Now this is a Proto-Indo-European, his Y DNA is R1AM459, uh, I'm not sure what kind of a subclade that is, oh no that's, that's R1A1 right, so his Y DNA is R1A1, uh, so pretty much every single person who's got R1A in Europe today uh, is a child clade of this of this subclade. So every single um, person with R1A in Europe today, such as me for example, or like most Russians, most Belarusians, descend from either this guy or like his brother or like his relative. That's pretty much what it is. Uh, and um, his mitochondrial DNA is U5, which is very European hunter-gatherer mitochondrial DNA typical mitochondrial DNA for European hunter-gatherers. Um, let's see, what about the timeline when he lived? Uh, okay, yeah, so he lived um, four, actually, that, is that four or is that five millennia? That's five, that's five and a half millennia before present. That's where he lived. Uh, it's, I w that, this is not even the Bronze Age. This is not even, I think this is the Chalcolithic. Yeah, so he lived in the Chalcolithic, and let's get into his autosomal DNA, what he looked like, what kind of illnesses he had, stuff like that. Let's move on to that. Alright, let's start with Nashakot. With Nashakot, he's predicted to have hazel eyes, uh, it looks like black hair, and it looks like darker brown skin. Okay, very interesting. But you know what's interesting? What's interesting is he's scoring hazel eyes. Isn't that, isn't that crazy? He's scoring 3.5% likelihood of blue eyes. That's crazy, I think. Because that means he has some um, he has some uh, depigmentation variants. Let's go ahead and scroll down to the end of the page, actually, to check if he does. Yes, he does. So he has AA here, which leads to light pigmentation, likely has blue eye haplotype 1. He's got blue eye haplotype 1. But that things don't stop. Uh, it doesn't stop here, because he also likely has blue eye haplotype 2. Look at that. That's, that, was, that is extremely uncommon for somebody in the Chalcolithic and somebody in uh, 5 millennia before the Common Era uh, to have this kind of a genotype. That's like extremely uncommon. This would be one of the lightest individuals in his tribe or wherever he was like... That's, that's just crazy. And he's also heterozygous for blue eye haplotype 3. He even has blue eye haplotype 3. Isn't that crazy? And he does not have blue eye haplotype 4. So this individual is very light in color. Um, in fact, I think if I look at just the uh, OCA2 and HERC2 eye color calculator results, we're going to see something, yeah, we're going to see something very light. We're going to see that his prediction is actually blue eyes if you only look at the OCA2 and HERC2 eye, um, if you only look at the OCA2 and HERC2 gene, his prediction is actually to have blue eyes. That's kind of crazy. So I think in Nashakot, he's predicted to have hazel eyes. But that's because of the influence of all the other genes that play a role. And I think uh, a big clue that we have here is that he's scoring dark or brown, or brown skin. That means he probably does not have uh, light color variants in SLC45A2 and SLC2485. And I think that's what contributed to him scoring hazel eyes instead of, you know, blue or something lighter. So yeah, that's kind of crazy. This individual is very light in color. Extremely light color individual. Um for his time, you know, by present standards, hazel eyes and black hair and dark skin for a European, that would be very dark. But by his time, uh, if, you if you judge him by the standards of like Chalcolithic Europeans, he was an extremely light color individual. All right, now let's go ahead and check his polygenic risk scores. For the polygenic risk scores, it seems that he's got, it looks like an average score for schizophrenia, uh, below average score for type 2 diabetes, <coughs> uh, above average score for Alzheimer's, very high score for Alzheimer's, one risk variant for breast cancer out of six. Uh, it's not a particularly high quality file, so that's why there's only six that were, that were found. Uh, five risk variants for testicular cancer out of 12, actually kind of, kind of alright, kind of average score for both breast and testicular cancer, alright. Uh, he has two that I have no go learner variants in DRD2 Pro Francine Pro. That's crazy. This is a very European individual. He's got two that I have variants in, uh, in Pro Francine Pro, so she's, he's got 
Let's do pomidor to receptor sites. Uh, he's got AA here in DRD2, which is implicated in decreased number of dopamine due to receptor sites in the brain. So yeah, so he, this individual just got much less dopamine due to receptor sites in the brain. I'm not sure if he's a warrior or a warrior, but if he's, because that's not in the file, but if he was a um, warrior, he might have had ADHD and problems with like attention and stuff like that. Uh, Alright, nothing for lactose persistence. Nothing for the empathy gene, unfortunately. That's not in the file. Uh, doesn't have type 1 diabetes. Good for him. Two variants for lower odds of type 2 diabetes. Two variants for lower odds of type 2 diabetes. And once again, lower odds of type 2 diabetes. But there's other um, genetic variations that contribute to the result, to the polygenic result that we see that we see right here. Let's actually go ahead and check that again. Yeah, he's got below average score for type 2 diabetes. But there's other... Uh, genotypes that contribute to this result, to the score, that are not shown on the screen. For Alzheimer's, he's got 2.4, so let's see why, what's up with that. Alright, so for Alzheimer's, he's got GG here, which leads to significantly higher odds of Alzheimer's disease. Yes, alright, we get it. So that's, this is why he's scoring the way he is. Um, for hemochromatosis, he is not a carrier for the C282Y hemochromatosis mutation, doesn't have the Celtic curse. Uh, although it would be very useful to know his genotype here and here because they are also very important uh, variations for hemochromatosis. He's got AA here, which is the typical genotype that leads to slightly higher risk of myopia or nearsightedness. He does not... What this really means is he doesn't have the GLE. If you're, if you're familiar with what, with what I do here on YouTube, uh, you've been following up with my videos, he doesn't have the GLE here. And the GLE is the allele that sort of protects against myopia and it's like super European. So nothing interesting here. Uh, no variance for increased pain sensitivity in SNC in SCN9A. When it comes to EDAR, he's got European genotype in EDAR. Uh, by the way, if you uh, upload, this is one of, one of the ways in which my trait predictor is superior to like code gen because if you upload them to go code gen, because this is not in the file, this variation right here is not in the file. You would not have a result for EDAR. But on my side, I also look for this variation. So I can say that he's got European facial traits. Very uncommon genotype for East Asians, typical for Europeans. But if I were to upload this to CodeGen, there's no way I would have known that. Uh, he's also not an Asian flusher. Lower odds of alcoholism. Uh, yeah, alright, so we know what Asian flushing is. That's not him. Uh, less likely to get away to take in Zyprexa. Very interesting genotype. I wish I had it. Uh, not a carrier of acutaneous albinism type 1b, not albino, and for familiar mediterranean fever, nothing is found in the file for the MTHFR panel. Um, he's got number of risks associated with impaired folate metabolism, cancer, cleft lip, dementia, arthritis, heart disease risk, and many more. And he's got the genotype right here, which is a common genotype, and it leads to slightly higher than average blood pressure. Now for the breast cancer, yes, this is one. This is the risk variant that he does have. So he's got this risk variant. This is really uncommon, by the way. Uh, all of these variants are really uncommon. But I don't think it would uh, be all that bad for him. Okay, and he's got moderately increased risk for acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Slightly higher score for leukemia. If I had a polygenic risk score for leukemia, he would score high on it. But I don't I don't have it, so it doesn't matter. Alright, now we're gonna go ahead and look at his ethnic calculator result. So for the single population, he's closest to Goyet, uh, which is a sort of like Cro-Magnon. Botai hunter gatherer from Kazakhstan, uh, Burtas from Volga. Uh, in case you don't know what Burtas are, it's um, it's uh, ethnicity that went extinct in the Middle Ages that lived on the shores of the Volga River, uh, and they were Iranic speaking. <laughs> Followed by that is Balshoy Leni Ostrov, Levan Lukta. Very interesting result. So let's go ahead and check what he scores with the um, three populations. He's getting modeled as a mixture of this one Anglo-Saxon individual plus Vindija Neanderthal plus Shumlaka. Shumlaka is a um, ancient 
um, African from Cameroon. What about five, four populations? Okay, now it's Anglo-Saxon. This is the same exact Anglo-Saxon individual plus Vindija Neanderthal plus Shumlaka plus this Turkic low quality file. All right, what about we reduce it to five populations? Okay, now Shumlaka is gone. And now instead we're getting the same Anglo-Saxon individual plus uh, WLH4, native Australian, plus Cotes Neanderthal plus Afonta Vagara 3, which is ancient North Eurasian plus Vindija Neanderthal. All right, what if we put distance column to 0 0.5? Okay, now Shumlaka appears again, and we're getting Anglo-Saxon, the same exact individual, plus Vindijan Yandertal, plus Shumlaka, plus low-quality Turkic file. Alright, that's what this Hovalinsk individual seems to be scoring with my calculator. Uh, mostly this Anglo-Saxon, which I made a video on, like, um, last week. Well, I don't know, depending on when I post this video. I might, I might post this video in a month. But, um... Yeah. Okay. And this is what he scores with Harappa World um, through Admixture Studio. Very clean result. 59% Northeast European. So mostly Northeast European, but there is also this a lot of affinities to um, Southwest Asia. And you, you see he's scoring 34.5% Baloch. Uh, this, this is a component that's supposed to peak in Iranian people and Baloch people and people of like northern india and pakistan and he's scoring a lot of this component this is the second largest component he's scoring at 34.5 percent i mean you know a lot of affinities to these pakistani people and with the oracle he's actually getting more as a mixture of finnish plus brahui or baloch or makrani basically a mixture of finnish plus some kind of um southeastern iranian so yeah there's clearly a lot of affinities to Southwest Asia here. There's and that's because of um, that's because of CHG and ancient North Eurasian admixture in this individual. Uh, it's not because this guy is like literally part South Asian or part Baloch or part something like that. No, it's just it's just ancient North Eurasian and CHG admixture. Well, thanks for watching until the end. You can download this file in 23andMe format. Um, the link to download the file will be in the description of the video. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy my content, and uh, goodbye.